Scout Sports Podcast, bringing you the latest news and scores from the world of sports. Here are your hosts, Noah Bowick and Anthony Bill. What is going on, guys? This is the Couch Scout Sports Podcast, where we teach you not only how to play fantasy football, but how to actually win fantasy football, the more important part. And uh, this is your host, Noah Balwig. You can find me on Twitter at K-O-T-S Fantasy. I'm going solo on this video today uh, with a new segment talking about Dynasty Leagues and how to rebuild uh, your Dynasty if you acquire an orphan team or, or if you're just starting out in Dynasty for the first time. But first, before we jump in, I just want to say that you can support us by following us on Instagram at the Couch Scouts Pod. You can reach us on email, thecouchscoutspod at gmail.com, and then go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube, the Couch Scouts Podcast. That would help us out a lot if you leave a comment, a, a rating, a review. That helps us uh, just get noticed and boost our name up there. So uh, if you want to help support the podcast, it's super easy. It takes 30 seconds, uh, something simple that you can do today if you're watching this video. But like I said, we are starting a new segment today, and I'm talking about how to rebuild a dynasty roster. And this is going to be uh, kind of a come along with the Couch Scouts and see how this process goes. It's not a one episode, uh, like a one hit wonder type deal, but I'm going to be walking you through the process of acquiring a dynasty team and rebuilding it into a contending team. And I got this idea. I I entered a contest. I had seen some, uh, uh, someone on Twitter had posted um, a roster, and they said tag someone that you feel like could turn this this team around. And so I I tagged Anthony, my co-host Anthony Bills, and I was like, if anyone can turn this team around, it's going to be him. And I actually ended up being the one to to win the giveaway. And what the giveaway was was they were going to give you that roster to see what it was that you could do if you could turn that team around. So uh, in a few minutes, I'll show you what the roster was. Um, it's definitely, when I when I logged in and looked at the league, it's definitely a rebuild team. They have, it has some good um, pieces on there, but uh, when you look at it in terms of dynasty, there's maybe one or two good players, uh, not a whole lot of depth, and uh, we got a lot of work to do. So we'll jump into that, but um, I just want to say, if you have never played in a dynasty league, uh, definitely something that you should get into right away. I, I mean, believe me, if you're if you're hesitant, you're like, I don't know, I don't know football that much. I don't know dynasty leagues. The big thing for me was I love redraft leagues. I have a group, uh, a home league of, of friends back home from high school that we play every single year, and we've kind of um, we've been on the threshold of just a regular redraft league and keeper league and kind of everywhere and in between. Um, which is really, really fun, but I don't know about you, but for me, there's nothing, there's nothing worse than when you pay into a league, you pay your, your $30, $50, $20, whatever it is, you go in for the draft and you draft, uh, a David Johnson, you know, two years ago in 2017, you draft David Johnson and first game breaks his wrist and you basically in a redraft league, you're like, okay, well that there literally goes my season because my number one pick who is statistically going to put up at least 150 to 200 points more than anyone else uh, in the second round or further on beyond that. I mean, that's so much points, it's almost impossible to recover from, especially if you're just in a single quarterback league. So I just got to a point where I was like, man, I'm just so sick of, you know, you get your draft spot and there's there's nothing you can do. It's like David Johnson broke his wrist. It, was he injury prone before that? Not really. You know, a couple of years before that, it was Eddie Lacy who broke out his, his rookie season with the Packers. The next year, I think I took him at the 102, and he, he just goes downhill. And, and basically, you have these players, and you waste an entire season of fantasy football. You stop checking your team because you know that you're out of it, which that not only affects you, but honestly, if, you, if you're the other teams, you're like, gosh, this is annoying because – the teams that are playing you are winning easily and it could cost a team that's actually competing a playoff spot. So anyways, a dynasty league, the difference between it is that it 
it literally never ends and it never has to end. I know so many people that have been playing in dynasty leagues for going on 20 years now. And the unique thing about a dynasty league is that there's one initial startup draft. So think of it as uh, if you were starting in 2020, you have one initial startup draft and you are going to draft a an entire roster. You're still going to start, you know, your 8 to 9, 10, 11, 12 guys, however many it is that you specify in your league, you're going to you're going to draft those players, but then you're also going to draft a deep 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 bench uh, as well. So you could find leagues most minimum are at 25 players a team. Uh, I've seen all the way up to 90 uh, if you're adding like uh, defensive defensive players, which I haven't even begun to dip into yet, but uh, I know a lot of people that play in, in those leagues as well. So it's usually somewhere in, inside the range of 28 to 32 uh, is the range that I've started um, seeing as the most common theme in Dynasty Leagues. But anyway, so you have this draft and you're going to draft from the first round all the way through the 28th round to fill out your roster. And that is your Dynasty team. So think about uh, if you were an NFL GM and the or say the XFL. The XFL just started this year. There was no players on any teams. And so the owners had to go in and have a draft, a startup draft, and choose which players they wanted to build their franchise their franchise around. And so this is the exact same thing. It kind of puts you in the seat of an NFL GM. And you have to ask the question, how am I going to build uh, my franchise? And so you want to think of it in terms of having enough balance of veteran players, but also enough balance of rookie incoming players, because the last thing you want to do is draft Tom Brady, uh, Frank Gore, Larry Fitzgerald, and Jason Witten as your your starting five. You know, you'll, you'll obviously have more starters than that, but obviously Tom Brady is going to retire in one to two years. Jason Witten, most likely his last year with the Raiders. Frank Gore, don't even know where he's at right now, but just a veteran running back, Larry Fitzgerald, this is most likely his last year. So you talk about having, if that was your starting five and then you go into next year, you're, those five starters are literally going to be gone and what are, what are you going to have next to show for it? So what Dynasty allows you to do is you draft your team and you have a balance of veterans who are going to obviously put up a lot of points because you can get a lot of good players like Aaron Rodgers, uh, Melvin Gordon, um, Golden Tate, different players like that who are just, you know, they're not at that retirement age, but they're they're kind of in the mix. And then you have uh, young rookie players like Nikhil Harry last year. You have DK Metcalf. Um, you have the incoming rookies this year, Jonathan Taylor, De- DeAndre Swift, uh, Jerry Judy, CD Lamb. And so you build your roster in the mind of I am competing not just for one year, but I'm competing for multiple championships from here on out and the great thing about that is it allows you to strategize from year to year and even if you have um, an injury it doesn't mean that your it it might mean that your season's over Uh, you know if you have Christian McCaffrey and he's out for the year it might mean that your season's over but what it most likely means is that you get to look at your roster and say okay what are my assets in my contending team right now should I should I trade some players away um, to try and fill that void of Christian McCaffrey, or is it kind of a pack it up season? Should I start trading away some older assets to get um, some some older, or I'm sorry, some younger players, some draft picks? So uh, that's just kind of the unique thing about dynasty leagues, and the great thing is that it, it rolls over every year. So rather than having um, a draft every single year where you're like, I don't know what pick I'm going to get if I get the the 101 or I get the 112, we'll see how it goes. And the unique thing is, is that uh, rather than having those draft picks where, um, you know, you play for one year and then you have to change your entire team, you're not sure who to draft the next year, is that your whole entire team rolls over so that if you are building a franchise with Aaron Rodgers, with Tom Brady, with Dak Prescott, with Russell Wilson, you are still going to have them the next year. So it puts so much more value and strategy in that initial draft, and it actually rewards owners who know fantasy football who know players in the NFL and say, okay, I know this guy's going to be a consistent quarterback for five years rather than, um, you know, you get Derrick Henry last year and you win and then you lose him the next year to the worst team in the league because the the draft order replaces. And then the unique thing is, you, you, you know, you ask the question, how do you actually get better if you have a bad dynasty team is 
And the answer is, is each year you still have a draft, but it's just a draft of rookies similar to the NFL. So you are going to draft quarterbacks, tight ends, wide receivers, running backs from the incoming uh, rookie class in 2020, 2021, whatever year it is. So every year you still have a draft, but um, the value is placed on these incoming rookie players, which honestly helps reward um, poor teams that, you know, if you finish last in the league, this past year, you're most likely going to have the 101, the first pick in the rookie draft. And so you're going to get the option to draft Jonathan Taylor. You're going to get the option to draft uh, DeAndre Swift, CeeDee Lamb, whoever it is that you want to add to your team. And um, it just adds so much more value. So um, if you have any questions about why join a dynasty league, uh, we have a video up on our website that you can or up on YouTube that you can watch as well. Um, or otherwise just DM us on Instagram or reach out to us on Twitter if you have questions about um, different Dynasty Leagues or if you're looking for one, uh, we have plenty that you can jump into uh, that I can direct you to. So uh, we'll get further into um, just hitting different aspects and different formats of Dynasty Fantasy Football, but for the main point, um, that's just kind of what you what you need to know. And like we've talked about on a few episodes, Anthony joined last year for the first time. And I think his team prior to him taking it over went, I think it was one in 12 or one in 13. And then he comes in, makes some different moves. So he had Christian McCaffrey on his team and that was kind of um, like the centerpiece. And then he goes ahead and sells some draft picks um, for the future to build for now. And he goes and gets Ezekiel Elliott um, there's a, a couple players like Debo Samuel that was that he drafted um, that was a great pickup for him and so he goes on to to make some trades and win the league his first year after after taking over uh, an orphan team what we would call it and so now he has the challenge of defending his title in 2020 but also keeping in mind how do I keep building this team to compete not just because I won it one year but I want to win multiple championships. Uh, as LeBron James would say, not one, not two, not three, not four. You get the picture. Um, so we're going to just break down what does um, this actually look like for teams if you're doing a startup draft for the first time, uh, but more specifically, how do you take a Dynasty League team that you have acquired, and we would call that an orphaned team, um, how do you take that and actually make it into a uh, competing team. So, um, a competing team. So basically, like I said, we acquired a team and the first thing that we're going to do is from my perspective, if we're going to look at a roster and see what kind of value do we have from top to bottom, from quarterback all the way down to tight end. And now this is a league, um, I haven't played in a dynasty league before with a kicker and a defensive position, just cause those are the most inconsistent and Honestly, it's just a, it's not a very consistent way to win um, fantasy football games, and it's a really lame way to lose because there's, I mean, there's literally n nothing you can do outside of the top three defenses, the top three kickers, um, and they just, th there's so much more value and so much more insight into quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends um, other than kickers and defenses. But anyways, this was the the team that I acquired, so we're gonna. Um, we'll just jump in and we'll just kind of go down the line and say, you know, what does our value actually look like? So, um, you know, looking at the quarterback position, you might say, okay, Tom Brady, like a great quarterback, a top 15 quarterback, um, and Mitchell Trubisky, a young guy. But when I look at this roster, I see Tom Brady. And the first thing I, I think of, I don't think of the Buccaneers offense. I don't think of um, 18 years in the NFL and the Super Bowls, I think Tom Brady is going to retire, if not in one year, in two years, and likely not play beyond that. So I know if I keep him, I will have Tom Brady for at least one to two years, but I also have to know that he is regressing. Uh, as much as he doesn't want to admit it or fantasy owners don't want to admit it, he is regressing, and that's uh, just that's just the fact of the matter. And then you go down the line to Ryan Fitzpatrick, who is not as old as Tom Brady, but is almost identical in age um, and has been in the league for a while and basically uh, is a not a fantasy irrelevant quarterback, but I would say in my mind a dynasty irrelevant quarterback, Most mostly because he, I mean, 
other than last year where he made a consistent amount of starts in 2019, he's been kind of up and down and hasn't been able to really hold on to a starting job or put up consistent fantasy numbers. I mean, there are seasons where he puts up a lot of points, but they might come in the span of four weeks where he throws four touchdowns each. And then, and then in the next eight weeks, he throws three touchdowns in each of those games. And, you know, there's all this quarterback controversy. So my first initial thought looking at both these teams or these players, I'm like, okay, I, I don't want these to be the centerpiece of my quarterback uh, position. And then moving on, same to Mitchell Trubisky. Now he's in a unique situation right now, heading into 2020 because he is going to be entering a quarterback competition with Nick Foles. So what I would be doing here, I'm most likely going to move Tom Brady, most likely going to move Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then I'm going to hold on to Trubisky to see what happens um, as the 2020 season approaches in fall camp and see who they announce as the starting quarterback because I don't I don't want Trubisky as my starting quarterback in a dynasty league, but he would make a good backup and there's no point in me moving him if he's still going to be a starting quarterback uh, in the NFL when I could use him as a backup. So that's kind of the quarterback situation. Now I acquired this team and I only have one pick uh, in the rookie draft for 2020 and it's the th- it's a third round pick the seventh pick so I know I'm not getting Joe Burrow I know I'm not getting Tua uh, I'm most likely not going to get Justin Herbert or Jordan Love so that leaves me p- with the possibility of maybe getting a Jacob Eason uh, or a- an Anthony Miller a player like that but uh, same thing most of those players aren't going to be starting so uh, I'm kind of need I need to make a move to get a quarterback Uh, with the assets that I have moving on to the running back position um, I have the I would say the number two ranked player in fantasy football the number two ranked running back behind Christian McCaffrey is Saquon Barkley and a lot of times when teams acquire player or a team when owners acquire teams like this you might look at Saquon and you're like there's no way I'm going to sell him there's no way I'm going to move him he's one of the best players but from my perspective I want to look at how valuable is Saquon Barkley right now is there is there any way in my mind that I think he becomes more valuable yeah a little bit but ideally I don't think he's going to surpass Christian McCaffrey I don't think that the Giants offense is going to surpass the usage that Christian McCaffrey gets with the Panthers and so right now I would say that Barkley is at his maximum capacity as far as value goes and a player that although I don't want to part ways with him Uh, I definitely have to be open to that conversation, and we'll talk about that uh, in just a few minutes as far as trades go and and how you go about um, getting value for players like that. Um, Patrick Laird, most likely not going to get playing time in 2020, you know, towards the end of the season in 2019 with Kalen Balazs. He was getting some reps, but uh, the Dolphins signed Jordan Howard for 2020, and they're most likely going to bring in a rookie running back as well. So, um, I Laird is a either going to cut him or just keep him on the roster. Um, next is Jalen Samuels, who is a, a great um, PPR running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. However, same thing with the Steelers situation. They're most likely going to uh, make a move late in the draft. I'm thinking either third, fourth, or fifth round for a running back as it is James Conner's contract year. So you look at a player like Jalen Samuels and you might say, Oh, you know, like he could be the handcuff to James Connors. He could be the ne- the next man up. But then you look at his statistics and what he's been able to do. The receptions are always there, but when he gets the opportunity to be the workhorse running back to get all the carries, um, he it's not there. It's just the reception. So a player that I might try and move, depending on what the Steelers do in the draft. You know, part of me is like you don't want to wait until the draft because his value might decrease if they do get a running back. Um, but you know, depending on who they get, it could open the door for Samuels to still get some playing time. So that will kind of be an interesting decision, um, that we make there. And then Devin Singletary running back for the Buffalo Bills rookie last year came onto the scene was not one of the, um, highly rated running backs, but, um, a small running back found his niche and proved to have, to be, to be able to carry a pretty good workload, um, for the Bills. So I would say the two running backs that I'm looking at here is Saquon Barkley and Devin Singletary. And I for, forgot to mention, I I will double check, but I believe that I 
have to start, um, I believe it's eight or nine people um, on this t on this team. I have to start eight or nine players. One has to be a defense and one has to be a kicker. So that leaves me with to choose between six players each week to be in my starting unit um, out of the quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end. And so um, I have to be keep in mind of that because you might say, well, you have Saquon and Devin Singletary, you're good. Yes, however, what, if I'm only starting six, that means that the other teams in my league can start their six best players and their six most likely will beat my six players. And I'll explain that in a minute as we move on to the wide receiver position. So you look at, um, we have Cole Beasley, uh, a great PPR guy with Dallas, a decent PPR guy with Buffalo last year. Now the, the Bills bring in Stephon Diggs. They have John Brown. And now that and Cole Beasley still going to be that slot guy, but but still, uh, receptions are going to move down because they got to open up and find some receptions for um, Stephon Diggs in there. And uh, I think Beasley's value he's a buy a sell now type guy, um, especially if the Buffalo Bills go ahead and draft another wide receiver. Um, T.Y. Hilton is aging and old. I think he's going to have a great 2020 season. But again, I'm most likely not going to come into the season looking to win the championship. So I'm most likely going to look for the teams that are set up to win and sell him to those teams because I know that they're going to want a, a really good veteran wide receiver on their team that can maybe be a starter for them or add depth. Whereas in my roster, um, he, you know, he's definitely one of my best receivers, if not the best, but uh, at his age and with his injury history, it's not a, wor a risk that I'm willing to take to keep him on my roster. Um, Auden Tate is a, a really interesting receiver for Cincinnati. I'm most likely going to keep him on my roster just because he is uh, heading into his third year and uh, showed some signs of life at, prior to a knee injury in 2019. So definitely we'll keep him. Uh, Golden Tate has been a PPR monster for years. I really, really like him with the Giants. However, it's the exact same thing. I think he's either 31 or 32. Um, so he's he's up there in age, and same thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna move him for you know a draft for a draft pick or uh, for a younger receiver to a t move him to a team that needs to compete now rather than a team that for me is rebuilding. Um, I think Sammy Watkins. I think since they did restructure his deal, I think he has a much better 2020 season than he did in 2019. So I'm most likely gonna hold on him. Uh, knowing that, that he couldn't really get any much worse than he did in 2019. So his value is going to increase. I'll go ahead and hold on to him in the hopes that I can sell him for a higher price um, mid-season. And then Robert Woods, this is a player, this is probably the one receiver that I'm like, yeah, I will, other than him and Auden Tate, I'll keep because uh, Woods, again, is like a Golden Tate, just younger and has a great role in the offense with the Los Angeles Rams and with the departure of Brandon Cooks. Woods is a guy that I think his value increases. Uh, he's got a he has a low floor for touchdowns, but um, I think that he still increases those in 2020. So that's kind of the wide receivers that I'm looking at. I'll definitely be moving at least um, four of the six, most likely keeping Robert Woods and Auden Tate. From the tight end position, um, Jason Witten, there's not a whole lot of value there. If I find a veteran, a, a contending team that needs a tight end, um, you know, maybe I'll go and sell him for a, a third or fourth round pick. But there's, he's got one year left and he's not the, the tight end one with this offense in Las Vegas. So he could be a potential cut option for me. Tyler Higby, I really liked his. Um, development in 2019 with the Rams. He'll be the tight end that I keep. Um, and then Darren Fells will most likely be a, a cut as well. And Will Disley, um, I'll keep him as well. Just even though they acquired Greg Olson, Disley is a, a really good tight end that I think after um, next year. So I might have to wait until 2021 to see some results, but he's a tight end I'm willing to sit on. And then, um, you know, as far as the defense goes, I'll I'll probably I'll probably hold on to to the both of those just because I haven't played in a um, a dynasty league with defenses before. I've done that with redraft leagues, so I'm not sure um, how these all work. But I love I love the Ravens defense. They've made a lot of good changes. So 
that is the that's kind of how you break down your roster and you have to do it from an unbiased perspective because you know when i look at saquon i think oh my gosh saquon like highlight reel penn state um love what he's been able to do in the league but then i but then you have to change your mindset from is he a great player to what is his actual value for my team and where is my team headed am i trending in the right direction or am i trending in the wrong direction and obviously with this team uh from a dynasty perspective definitely not heading in the um the right direction yet but we we are going to get there so um next let's talk about some trades now when i joined this league um, i actually had some trades waiting for me to answer uh, from the get-go so i'm just going to highlight those really really quickly and tell you why um, i made there or why i didn't make i haven't made any moves yet but why i'm considering them so the first offer was miles sanders a second year running back in philadelphia plus the second pick um in this year's rookie draft, which potentially could be DeAndre Swift, could be C.D. Lamb, could be Jerry Judy, and that is in return for Saquon Barkley. Now, the way that I value this, I know that Saquon Barkley is the second best player in fantasy football. Hands down, he's right behind Christian McCaffrey. He's a do-it-all running back, a great runner, but also a great pass catcher in an offense that is getting better. Now, when I look at Saquon Barkley's ADP, which stands for average draft value, his ADP right now is about 1.75, which means that he is um, undoubtedly a second round pick, but even at times being a first round pick. If you if you think of ADP as um, Christian McCaffrey would be one, but he's not a perfect one because there are teams that go um, and that go in and, you know, draft a Saquon Barkley or Michael Thomas. So McCaffrey would be like a 112 and then Barkley's next with like a 1.75. And so you look, you think of that ADP value. And then I looked at Miles Sanders and I looked at, um, the 102. And so I went, I went in and found some ADP data and I looked at DeAndre Swift and I looked at Jonathan Taylor and combined Sanders and that pick were around uh, somewhere in, somewhere in between the 20 and 30s of ADP. So they're going um, either they're going in the second round or even at times going in the third round of drafts. So I had to ask the question: Do I want to trade a second round pick and a and a basically a third round pick for Saquon Barkley? The difference being 7.5. Uh, in ADP value difference. Basically, when I took Saquon Barkley's value and those two picks, this is what the difference would be because I'm combining two players. And it came out as this would be a negative 7.5. I'd be losing basically 7.5 um, in in valued ADP, which basically what that tells me is that the difference between Saquon Barkley and these two players is like 7.5, not fantasy players, but draft spots. And so if this was, if this number was smaller, you know, if, if he had added in a, another rookie pick, you know, maybe another, like the 112 or even a second round pick, I would definitely be more inclined, but um, I had to reject this one and say, Hey, I'm interested, but uh, I'm most likely going to need a little bit more on that. Uh, another pick was Tyler Lockett and the 310 for Robert Woods. Now, based on the ADP value, this would be like me. If I sent Robert Woods and I got the 310 and Tyler Lockett, it basically would be me jumping up eight spots in the um, ADP value. However, I really like Tyler Lockett, but just looking at what he did after... Um, the emergence of DK Metcalf, he really kind of took the back seat. He's become a wide receiver two and a wide receiver three, honestly, in my opinion, in an offense that runs the ball a lot and the targets mostly go to DK Metcalf. Now, the third pick in a rookie draft is great because I need to rebuild, but um, we kind of talked about there's not going to be any quarterbacks available then. You know, there might be some really late there might be some tight ends that I could target. There might be um, a late wide receiver that I could target. But 
the difference between Tyler Lockett and Robert Woods isn't enough for me. And I like Robert Woods' situation better with, like I said, the departure of Brandon Cooks. This was another offer that uh, is a little bit more enticing. So basically this was the first place team in this league offering me his 112, which is the last pick in the first round and the uh, 10th pick in the third round for a future 2021 first. Now, I'm guaranteed to have the 12th pick here in the first round, which isn't bad considering that I don't have any picks until the third round in this 2020 draft. Um, however, if there's a chance that I don't finish in, um, if I finished in first place next year, which looking at my team, I'm definitely not going to do. Even if, if I finished in first place, he would be getting the 112 next year. But the reason he's sending this offer is because he is anticipating that I finish towards the bottom um, of the of the standings in 2020, which would give him most likely anywhere from the first pick in the rookie draft to, I would say, the fifth or sixth pick in the rookie draft. And he would basically be trading me the 112 and a third round pick for next year's fifth or sixth round pick. So I look at that, you know, it's, it is enticing because I want to get into this year's class, but uh, I most likely, he also had the 106. So I countered with that and he declined it, but um, definitely a trade that I, I was hoping to get, um, but didn't necessarily work out. So um, we'll definitely, I'll be pulling up some more trades that you can check out um, that I'm offering and that are being offered to me and, and why I'm offering those. And that'll kind of help give a better idea of some of the some of the uh, just thought process that I'm going through um, for those. But let's pull this team back up. And like we already talked about a little bit, um, just some ads and drops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the free agent list on our league website. And this is uh, run on a, a site called myfantasyleague.com. Uh, a majority of you might have not, not have played on it before, um, but it offers definitely the most customization of any dynasty league, any fantasy league that you run. But um, what I really like about it, or what I like about doing ad drops is in dynasty, is that the the leagues are always open. You can always trade no matter what point of the year it is. If it's one day after the Super Bowl, you can make a trade. Uh, if it's July, you can make a trade. And even right now, I can be adding and dropping players. So. I have 20 some players on my roster. I'm going to go through and I'm going to figure out, okay, who has no value to me and most likely no value to anyone else, meaning I can't trade them for anything. I'm going to drop those players and then I'm going to look at um, some ads and drops that I, or what well, we talked about drops, but some players that I could add. So I'm going to be looking for youth. I'm going to look for uh, some young players, maybe from the 2018 or 2019 class that haven't yet blossomed or developed. I'm going to target them. Uh, I'm going to look for players who are trending um, at, you know, going into the draft or going into training camp. Players who, you know, maybe they had teammates leave in free agency, which opened up the door for them. So you, you just kind of go through and you scour uh, news reports and uh, find some players that you might want to add. So the next time we bring up this video, we will show you uh, a brand new roster. There might be some trades in there, there might be some drops and ads, um, but we'll we'll break down each move that we made and um, share that process with you as well. So um, I'm gonna wrap up the, the episode and we're just gonna get us back to uh, this main screen here. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode one of Rebuilding a Dynasty Team. And I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about um, about the roster, or you, if you have any suggestions or things that you would do, uh, just go ahead and DM us. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter. That, that's where I'm always on, at KOTS Fantasy. You can uh, send me a DM or just tweet at me. Otherwise, just DM us on Instagram, and we would be happy to, to answer some questions. But uh, if you're looking to get into a Dynasty League for the first time, definitely reach out to us and we would be happy to um, send you in the right direction. If you want to join a league with us um, or, you know, go in a different direction, we'll definitely um, hook you up with some, some details. I will definitely say it is the best format for fantasy football. It 
once you once you get into it, you won't want to play redraft ever again, and you'll want to bring all of your friends from redraft uh, into dynasty leagues. It takes a little bit of adjustment, but honestly, you get a year under your belt, and um, it just adds so much more to the fantasy football game uh, because it's not this pressure of one year. It's no, I'm I'm building something for for the future. Um, if you're looking for resources, I would definitely recommend. Um, you know, DMing us about some podcasts that you can can listen to about uh, starting a dynasty league for the first time. Uh, we'll definitely be talking about it more on our podcast, but there's some great uh, articles and um, different forums that you can join um, to get more more insight and info about that. So, um, with that, I'm going to wrap this episode up. We'll be back. Um, not sure exactly the, the proximity of the next episode, but it'll be in the next at least in the next week um, as we make some moves and uh, just kind of navigate some trades. So uh, again, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. You can follow us on Instagram at the Couch Scouts Pod, and you can find this episode on Spotify playlists and also on Apple playlists for podcasts um, as, well, um, as well as on YouTube, which is where you're most likely watching this right now. So uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, leave a rating or a review for us. It helps us out a ton. Uh, it's the best support that you can give to us. So thank you so much for watching and we will catch you guys on the next episode.